Welcome back to Regent Videos. We are here today with Mr. Abraham Verghese. Uh, he was in London for about 45 years where he also practiced as a barrister. Today we will be brainstorming certain words mm -hmm. and phrases that we come across in IELTS across all modules. Uh, so shall we begin, sir? I'm entirely in your hands, ma'am. Let's kick start this video with the first phrase. It's uh, business acumen. What comes into your mind, sir? Business acumen. Well, some people are blessed with it. They know the smell of money, the value of money, the reason of money. I think they reach a stage in their minds where they even worship money. Uh, but it is not that. It is mainly how you employ your monies in doing business so that it can result in profits for the organization. Now, I use the term organization uh, so that I don't have to break down companies, corporates, this, that and the other, and partnerships, okay? But it is the unit that uh, is there to make a profit in business. Why are people there doing business? Because they need to make a profit. Why is it that some people fail? Because business acumen, the required business acumen was not there. Luck was not in their side. Or a turn in market suddenly that upset the entire setup. But there are many people who survive it. And the survival is by, the, by applying business acumen, knowing suddenly which markets to move into, what the demands are like uh, around the world, what the local demands are, and uh, studying effectively the trends of human behavior and the demands that the market is making. Hmm. So there's a collection of material that actually contributes towards the mind having a setup that is geared towards business. Right. Okay? And it is the employment of that that brings about the sharpness in business thinking and that acumen is that accuracy is that professionalism, it's that methodology of thinking. It is always required in order to be successful in business or for whatever unit you're working for. Right. Okay. Thank you, sir. No so, continuing our, tra our train of thoughts with economics, the next word is labor intensive. Labor intensive, yes. Well, there is always a fear from time immemorial, at least certainly as far as I'm concerned, where people thought that inventions were, would replace uh, labor-intensive activities. Industry started off by the need for labor and wars were conducted also by intensifying the amount of people uh, doing work and the rate of work. Now, what was required was that people did a job that came out, let's say, uh, in the process of a machine and then it needed to be filled up, then it needed to be sealed, then it needed to be packaged. Let's just take those examples for now. So each unit of production required at least four people, hmm. one to work the unit and three others to do that, to do what I just said. So that multiplies into a big force and what happens then is that the costs increase considerably and then it becomes too expensive for the common person to buy it and that loses the purpose of what that uh, product is supposed to do, okay? Now, for example, if you take marketing uh, vegetables, the vegetables need to be picked, you pay them, they need to be cleaned, you pay them, they need to be trimmed, you play them, they need to be polished, you look after that, and then it needs to be packaged, yes, and then it needs to be uh, sealed, and then also you need to have people checking on it for quality control. Now all that is very labor intensive. To avoid that, inventions have caused people to be replaced by machines as we are doing today with robots. Okay? But believe you me, whether you like it or not, it might be suitable for that particular industry or for that temporary moment because at the end of the day, 
you'll have to get people who know how to repair a robot, mm. who know how to service a robot, mm. who know how to replace a robot, and so on and so forth. And all that has happened is that the function of labor has shifted into another line. Mm. I'm not saying that everybody who gets displaced uh, in the labor-intensive industry is going to find an employ employment over there. No. But then they might find employment if they study a bit further mm. or uh, get themselves updated with uh, information mm. and uh, partake in the administration of uh, firms. Okay? So, uh, the labor-intensive situations vary with each age, vary with the dimensions of the products, of the new products that come out, and our demand and our style of living sometimes needs to, you know, what gets changed uh, by progress and which then demands changes in the entire system of production. So labor intensive is where intensive amount of labor, that is a lot of labor, is required to produce something uh, that could be simplified if advanced uh, information or advanced machinery is available. Right. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Moving on, uh, corporate culture. Oh, God. Corporate culture is that which is common mainly in capitalist countries. Uh, in fact, like everything in the world, you know, rules are making to be, um, are there to be broken. Uh, you have corporate culture in China hmm. where uh, they will challenge you if you say it's a capitalist country. Yeah. But it is basically where, where one, uh, an individual commits himself or herself to the way of life that is dictated through by the corporate structure. In other words, your focus is entirely for the corporate. Yeah. You're living your life basically for the corporate. Your promotion, your lifestyle, your money, your ethos, Everything that goes with being a human being is concentrated for the company. Now, that also means grouping. In other words, you behave in such a manner that generally society finds it difficult to cope with you because your conversation is about the company. Mm. And so you end up being in the company that you're working for, our friends in that company, or acquaintances in that company, but certainly in that company itself, okay? And that is a very negative effect. Hmm. Now, the corporate culture can also be very damaging because you lose sight of the family, you lose sight of values, of quality time with your children, and you give the most or the greatest priority to the corporate structure. Mm. Don't forget, the corporate structure is an inanimate object and the corporation is actually a non-living creature. It's a concept that I uh, personally disagree with, but that is an entirely my choice, my subjective choice. You might find it more convenient to handle. Okay. Right. Well, thank you so much, sir.